Hello and welcome to this Azure Advent Calendar episode on being successful in Azure. And first of all, just a big thank you to Gregor and Richard for putting this together. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I've personally been enjoying all the videos that have been coming out this month. Lots of new things I've learned, lots of new people I've met. So I think this is a fantastic part of the hashtag Azure family. So thank you for, for putting this on. Um, so let's get started on being successful in Azure. So a quick note about myself, my name is Nick Collier. You may know me from Skylines Academy. I teach a lot of Azure training courses there, and I also work for Ahead, a consulting company in Chicago where I'm the chief architect for cloud. So I get to spend a lot of time day to day with customers. I talk to a lot of people in the industry uh, around how they've been successful in cloud, what are the, what's the training they get in, you know, what are they doing to be successful in cloud. And actually going into this talk, you know, the more I thought about it, I went to our Azure study group on Facebook and I said, you know, what do you guys want to know about being successful in Azure? And basically, I had a lot of questions come in. People put a lot of topics in. So what I thought I would do for this talk is basically hit those topics and questions uh, that students basically asked me. So the first one is, how do I get started? And are there free resources? One of the biggest things people have been saying is, hey, I want to train in Azure, but it's really expensive. I don't want to swipe my credit card. Or where do I get learning resources? You know, how do I, how do I get going? So first of all, what I would say uh, is it does help to have a certification goal if you're starting out. Now, there's a number of certifications, as you can see on the slide screen here. We've got everything from beginner to advanced certification. So if you're just getting started, AZ900 Fundamentals is a great goal. Intermediate certification, you've got AZ103, the Azure Administrator Certification. Perhaps you're a security admin that needs to know Azure. You don't necessarily need to know AZ-103. You could go straight in for AZ-500 and focus more on security. And then as you get more advanced, maybe you've got a DevOps focus. Maybe you really want to be the Azure Solutions Architect Expert. You've got those AZ-300 and 301 exams for you. So what about resources? Well, here's a bunch that you can immediately take away. Uh, Microsoft Learn Site, I always encourage people to do it. You know, I definitely put out a lot of training personally. You know, I put out a lot on blogs. The team at Skylines puts out a lot, but the Microsoft Learn Site is completely free. Go over there, get started. You know, there's a lot of just great tutorials to get going there. Uh, then we've got the Skylines Academy blog. Let me quickly show you that. So if you head over to skylinesacademy.com, select resources and go to the blog there and you will see a number of articles here like tips for taking Azure exams, learning from failure, which was a great session at Ignite from Jeremiah Dooley. A lot of people will resonate with that in their enterprises. Uh, and also in here you can go to study material uh, and this has got a whole bunch of reference guides, uh, study material for the certifications for you there as well. Another great resource is the GitHub repo for Azure. So if you go to GitHub, Azure, just Google search that and you can click there, Microsoft Azure GitHub, which is github.com slash Azure. There are loads and loads of quick start templates, reference material here, particularly people that are getting started in ARM templates. This is a great resource for you to use to get the, the code ready available and then you can modify it as you need to. The free PowerShell admin guide. You may have seen this. We just launched this recently as well. Uh, this is something that you can basically put on your desk and use day to day. One of the things I, I get asked a lot is, okay, I've learned through the Azure portal, but how do I learn those day to day commands? You know, I've been told that I shouldn't be somebody that goes around clicking through the portal day in, day out. I need to learn coding. Well, definitely learn ARM templates and definitely learn Azure PowerShell as well. Now this guide is currently on version three. So it's PowerShell reference guide version three. As I said, completely free. It starts off, just tells you how to get started with PowerShell, PowerShell basics, installing on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, etc. And then if you scroll through the guide, what you'll see is it's all broken out by section. Uh, so you've got different things and say you wanna know how to do PowerShell commands around accounts and subscriptions. Those are all there. You can drop down to say like virtual machines, networking, resource groups, tagging is a big one. A lot of people wanna know, hey, how do I get lists of tags? How do I pull resources based on tags? Uh, all of those things are really, really useful. So I encourage you to check that out as well. Uh, and all of these together, like the Microsoft Learn, the blogs, the Microsoft GitHub, uh, the community, all of that is going to help you, you know, learn in Azure. Going back to blogging just for a second, one article I will call out is by Matt Boyd, which is how to keep costs down while learning Azure. And he talks a lot here about getting your free trial account. He talks about the different machine types, Visual Studio subscriptions, 
pay-as-you-go, housekeeping. Housekeeping is so important. The biggest thing I think a lot of people mess up on, and frankly, I've done it plenty of times. I'm recording something, I build some VMs, I leave them out there, and before I know it, I've used up my MSDN credit. So housekeeping is so important for making sure that you just turn things off. And Matt also talks about some of the automation techniques that you can use here as well, just to make sure things shut off automatically You know, when, they, when they're not in use. So the next question, so if I get certified, do I get the job? And this was a really interesting topic. We were talking a lot about this on the forums today. I was talking to Shannon Keen quite a bit about this uh, because a lot of people think this, right? Like, hey, there's these six figure salaries out there. I get certified, you know, I'm ready to go. Where's my job now, right? And so there's a couple of key things you can think about in this space. Number one, uh, networking. Now this is absolutely paramount. You should absolutely go to user groups. You should get to know people in your community. If you don't have a LinkedIn subscription today, highly encourage you to get one, update your LinkedIn profile, be really professional, get to know people. And you know, the more people you know in the space, uh, the more likely you are to find the job that you want. Uh, in addition, teach others. You know, a big part I would say of my success in IT and my career in general, all the way from sysadmin up to where I'm today as an architect is by teaching others. You know, one of the things that I really, really enjoy is just spending time, like getting groups of people together. Sometimes I get five or six people together in my company uh, and I would say, let's go and learn, you know, Azure. Let's go and learn VMware back in the day, right? Let's learn these technologies together. Uh, and just by doing that, by helping other people, uh, again, that's going to help you. You're going to be looked at as somebody that's really like a thought leader or just driving good behavior in your organization shows that you care about other people as well uh, I think that is absolutely one of the best things you can do day in and day out and uh, and since I started that it's you know obviously evolved now and now I teach people online so put out YouTube videos highly encourage that as well in fact this Azure Advent Calendar in itself uh, if we just think about what this has meant everybody on the Azure Advent Calendar is teaching people something every single day people are on YouTube so even if you think you don't know the topic I would say go and research the topic read about it you know maybe you want to get into Azure networking in detail maybe you really love Azure governance right go and read about it and then go and record something about it. You know, you can, you'll can you get a lot of feedback from people, talk about it in groups. Uh, definitely just put yourself out there and I can tell you a lot of people appreciate the content that everybody creates here. The next thing I'll say is challenge all ideas. Don't say it can't be done. I think this is one of the things that's frustrated me the most in my career in IT sometimes is we would go into a meeting and we would try to automate. You know, A good example I can give you is we wanted to automate backups once at one of my companies and one of the people there consistently said, no, we can't do it. We have to manually do something. Uh, and people challenged that. In fact, one of my directors there at the time, one of my mentors, it's probably one of the best moments, you know, I would say I had an IT career, um, but he was in there and, you know, it was just probably like 10 days after they landed the rover on Mars, right? So this is just a fantastic thing to talk about because, you know, in there they're saying this can't be done. We have to be at the keyboard. We have to, you know, have control over the storage array. And he was like, Come on, they've just put a rover on Mars. They launched it from Earth. We landed it remotely all over there. How can we say it can't be done? And so this concept of just challenging everything, I think is so, so important. Next, learning to say no. And that might be saying no to a job as well. I think it's one thing to think about, hey, I wanna get the job, I immediately wanna to get to work. But I would just say saying no is just as important. Don't go for the job that you don't think is right for you. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do your time. Like, you know, I worked in help desk. I still have memories that are burned into my brain from being on call, right? And I still think to this day, perhaps my sleep has never fully recovered from it. Uh, but I would say just know, know what you wanna do, know what your passion is and focus on that. Say no to a job that you don't feel is right and try to focus on the things that are really important to you. Because if you focus on the things that you're really, really passionate about, you're going to be more successful in those areas. If you really, really love networking, focus on networking, be the best networking person you can, definitely branch out, don't completely silo yourself, uh, but know, you know, know what you wanna do and know what you're getting into. Next, we had another question around what about containers and Kubernetes in general? And the, the question was really around, should I be learning that today? And you know, my answer, my opinion is categorically, absolutely. You know, I, I personally believe and the, the way that I'm seeing with customers today is that almost every single one of them is looking at containers as a newer deployment method versus virtual machines. Now that doesn't mean virtual machines and IaaS are going away. We're still doing end tier deployments over and over again, uh, but absolutely you should be learning containers. You should know how to create a container. You should learn about Docker files. You should learn about Kubernetes. 
Azure Kubernetes service is just a fantastic service. I think it's very mature already considering how long it's been out and I think that maturity is only going to continue. Um, but there's a lot of interest in, in Kubernetes today. Next, I'm just completely new to cloud technology and I don't know where to begin. So this is a really interesting one because I think when you're this early into your career, I mean, frankly, I think it's actually an exciting time for you because you get to choose where which direction you want to go. You know, I've been in infrastructure so long. Uh, I, you know, I try to, you know, I'd be dangerous as a developer from time to time, but I didn't grow up in the development world. And there's a lot of software developers who maybe want to know more about infrastructure. And, and I think the other side, like when I look at all the jobs people have had in the industries I've worked in, in technology, um, you know, there's been people that have been exchange administrators. There's been Windows Server admins, Linux Server admins, network admins, storage engineers, architects, obviously, for all these areas as well, um, VMware engineers, right? I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, if you're thinking of getting into Azure today, you know, and the, and the, the goal of this topic was being successful in Azure, well, Azure in itself is such a, such a broad topic now, right? So you can sort of divide it up. I would say look at the grid of services they have and start to think about the areas that you gravitate towards. If you love working with data, perhaps you're a SQL admin and maybe you want to move into kind of data science and data platform modernization, that could be an avenue that you take. Maybe you really love teams and messaging and helping people collaborate. You could go down the Microsoft 365 route and really get good at you know all those technologies. Perhaps you love infrastructure. Maybe you're coming from a VMware background, you know, focus on the, the infrastructure side of things. Back to the question though, I'm just completely new to cloud tech and I don't know where to begin. Uh, I would say pick your path to begin with and then start in the fundamental part of, of that path. And then I would say go in and get some experience. Go work in an operation center, work in a NOC. Um, if you're going down the infrastructure path as an example, you know, maybe you want to learn about networking, there's no better place than to do help desk, see the tickets come in, be on outage calls. You know, as much as it pains me to have done that over the years and you know, like I said, still destroys my sleep, I think to this day. Um, I do think it was time well, well spent because you, you got so much experience and helps you mature and understand the problems enterprises go through in IT. I would also say that once you get really good at one of those areas, try to branch out, try to look at your peers, see what they're doing. Uh, maybe you're a Windows admin, now you want to learn virtualization or you know, maybe you want to go straight in with Azure and know Azure networking, maybe you want to know Azure compute. You know, just decide what area you want to focus in and then kind of expand out from that. The next question then probably touches on the previous one. Is it better to be a mile deep or a mile wide? Well, I would argue, and I'm curious on the feedback, would love comments on this and see what other people think. But I would say when you get in started initially, it's, it's best to be really, really good um, at a technology, right? Be really good at it, understand it, uh, and you you know still understand other technologies and branch out again going back to that. Uh, I think it also depends what you want to do with your career. You know, I've, I've talked to a lot of engineers, you know, over time, and some people really, you know, some people get frustrated when they're not really good at something. They know they know a lot about, you know, sorry, a little bit, a lot of things, but they don't know a lot about one thing. And you know, everybody's personality is a little bit different in the space. So I don't think there's a right or wrong answer here. You know, I would say today, I know a lot about you know, a number of technologies, but a few of those technologies I can go very, very uh, deep in. You know, if you ask me about Azure, you know, I'd say I really spent a lot of time with customers going into governance, understanding management groups, policies, things like that. Uh, I spend a lot of time on automation and integration. You know, those are areas that I've spent a lot of time focused on. Now, I still understand networking. I still understand storage. I understand containers, virtual machines. But if you ask me if I was a Kubernetes expert, the answer would be no. And I would talk to my peers that are experts in that space. But I will say, you never stop learning. I think the Azure Advent Calendar, again, going back to that, uh, is it just reinforces that. And it's exciting that everybody's come together again to just put this content out there. So the final question we have here is tips and tricks, blogs, etc. was one of the questions uh, that came up in the Facebook group. And I would just say, um, you know, do labs. I think is probably one of the big things I would say from tips and tricks, you know, grab a lab guide, look through GitHub, deploy technologies. Again, go back to that focus. I think all these questions kind of, kind of drive each other in a, in a way if you think about it. But I would say like start out by just going into Azure, build virtual machines, understand them, understand all the storage options, understand the networking, understand how to add a disk, understand how to take away a disk, understand how to add a network card and change IP addresses and all those kind of things. I think when you do those things, um, think about your day in the life of an admin 
uh, I think that will really, really help you. Uh, blogs, I mean, there's Azure Friday, there's, you know, Channel 9 puts out great content every Friday. Uh, again, you know, I rely on those things personally to keep up to date. Uh, I rely on things like Mike Pfeiffer has a brilliant thing every Friday on LinkedIn where he goes live and he interviews someone and they talk about topics. Again, Azure Admin Calendar, I think there's just, you know, ton of resources out there. With that said, this brings us to the end of being successful in Azure. I hope you found this useful. I personally would love to hear from you. The Skylines Academy team would love to hear from you uh, on this topic. So if you have any questions around your success, uh, please let us know and you know we'd be delighted to help. Reach out to us via Twitter. I love the comments in the Azure Advent Calendar on YouTube. You know, however you want to get in touch with us would be uh, would be fantastic because it's something we care very passionately about and we want you to be successful. Our motto is educate, enable, and empower. And we think those three things are the secret to being successful in Azure. So with that said, Merry Christmas or Happy Christmas, as we say in the UK. Have a wonderful New Year wherever you are in the world. Enjoy the holidays and look forward to seeing you in the community. Cheers and good luck in your career.